Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the EOS M50, a mid-range mirrorless camera and Canon's first mirrorless to offer 4K video, a side hinge screen, and a microphone input. Could this be their best camera for vlogging yet? Let's find out. I got to try out the M50 at a Canon press event, so this video is based on using the camera in person, and also asking questions to actual Canon engineers and product managers. If you'd like to find out the latest camera news direct from these events, then you know what to do. Subscribe to my channel using this button in the corner. Come on, don't be shy. Give it a click. Thank you very much. Now, on with the video. The M50 may be styled like a DSLR, but it's much smaller and lighter than even an entry-level model. I've got the white version here, but there's a black finish if you prefer, and I've also got the EFM 15-45mm kit zoom fitted. Impressively for the money, there's a built-in viewfinder with a 2.36 million dot OLED panel. The image magnification is fairly small, like earlier Canon mirrorless bodies, but the view is at least very crisp, detailed and smooth. Previous Canon mirrorless cameras have had vertically tilting touchscreens, but the M50s is the first in the series to be side hinged, allowing it to flip out and face the subject without obstructing the tripod mount at the bottom or the hot shoe at the top, ideal whether you're using microphones or flashes. Yes, microphones, as the EOS M50 is also one of the few cameras at this price point with a 3.5mm microphone input. You can understand how this is going to be a popular option with vloggers, although sadly, you can't charge the battery over USB. The EOS M50 employs a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor with dual pixel CMOS AF. Canon's boosted the number of AF points from 49 to 99, and if you're using certain lenses, this can increase further to 149 points across a slightly broader area using the full sensor height and 88% of its width. Disappointingly, the EFM 15 to 45mm kit zoom is not one of those lenses that will support all of the autofocus upgrades on the M50. Disappointing because, of course, as the kit zoom, this is the lens that almost all M50 owners are going to have in their collection. That's not to say it doesn't enjoy some benefits, though. It will support 99 autofocus points, so that's still double what you had before, and it still operates over 80% of the sensor width and 80% of the sensor height. The M50 debuts Digic 8, allowing it to shoot at 10 frames per second with single AF or 7.4 frames per second with servo AF. Digic 8 also brings eye detection for the first time on a Canon, and I tested it here on this portrait with a beta body. Once enabled in the menus, you'll see a box appear over the nearest eye once face detection has made the initial acquisition. Canon also suggested to me it might work with non-human subjects like pets or maybe me before I've had a coffee. Digic8 finally brings a compressed RAW option to the M50. The new C RAW quality mode will capture full resolution RAW files, but reduce their size by around 40%, while still retaining those RAW benefits like being able to adjust the white balance after the event. If you prefer, uncompressed RAW files are also still available, albeit in the new C R3 format. And while you wait for your applications like Lightroom to support this new format, Canon does at least provide RAW processing in playback. Now, if you explore the scene preset menu, unfortunately, you're not going to find a panorama mode on the M50. Disappointing because, well, shouldn't all cameras be able to do in-camera panoramas these days? Even the G1X Mark III could do it. And this, after all, debuts the latest Digi-K processor, but alas, it was not to be. But if you explore those menus a little bit further, you will find a new silent mode, which employs a fully electronic shutter to operate in complete genuine silence. Now, this is the first time that Canon's done this on a mirrorless camera, although it works in the same way as other models, which offer a fully electronic shutter. It operates in silence. That's great if you want to be discreet, but beware of the rather slow sensor readout on the M50, at least on the beta body that I tested, because it was rather susceptible to rolling shutter artifacts, to skewing when you pan the camera or shoot subjects in motion. So if you are using the electronic shutter on the M50, or indeed most other cameras which offer the facility, beware of subjects in motion and try and stick to the static ones. You heard me right earlier, the M50 becomes Canon's first mirrorless to film 4K video. It's been a long time coming, but it's now available at 24 to 30p. Meanwhile, there's 1080 up to 60p and 720 up to 100 or 120p for slow motion. You can also film up to half an hour clips in 4K or 1080p. I filmed this with a Beta EOS M50 in 4K 25p, and I should mention straight away there's two big downsides compared to filming in 1080p. First, the 4K mode on the M50 does not work with dual pixel CMOS AF, so you'll miss out on the smooth and confident refocusing. 
And secondly, 4K on the M50 employs a rather severe crop of 1.56 times. Now there's optional digital stabilization, which I've used here, but it incurs an even tighter crop of 1.75 times or 2.2 times if you're using the most effective mode. So if you're into vlogging, especially handheld vlogging, you're gonna want a really wide angle lens. Speaking of vlogging, here's a quick test in 1080p, again with a beta body. Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is a quick vlogging test with the new Canon EOS M50. I'm filming this in 1080 25p, which is the mode you'll need to use if you want dual pixel CMOS AF. That's what I'm using here to hopefully keep focused on my face as I'm moving. I'm shooting this with a 15 to 45 millimeter kit zoom, zoomed out to 15 millimeter. So this is as wide as this lens goes in this video mode. I am, however, applying the full digital stabilization, the enhanced mode, and that implies a bit of a crop. So here's the quality in 1080p. Now let's have a look in, yes, 4K. Ah, sorry for the huge face. Here's the same sequence in 4K and even with the 15 to 45 millimeter at its widest 15 millimeter. The trouble is that 1.6 times sensor crop coupled with a further 2.2 times crop when filming 4K with enhanced stabilization means I'm effectively working at an equivalent of 53 millimeters here. That's completely unsuitable for vlogging with a handheld camera. You really need something much, much wider like the EFM 11 to 22 millimeter if you want a handheld vlog in 4k with the m50 and even then you won't be enjoying the confident refocusing of dual pixel cmos af remember though this footage was filmed with a beta body so final ones may perform better and i'll of course retest this in my final full review the touch screen lets you tap to reposition the autofocus area or pull focus during movies. This first clip was filmed in 1080p with the EFM 15 to 45 millimeter at 45 millimeter on a beta body. But because I'm filming in 1080, it's using the M50's more confident dual pixel CMOS AF. You can see that the camera stops focusing as soon as it hits the target. There's no hunting here. This next clip was filmed in 4K with the same lens and from the same distance, so you can really see the effect of that 1.56 times crop when you're filming 4K. You'll also notice the contrast-based focusing in this mode is less confident than the previous clip. I mean, sure, it works. It is pulling focus between the near and far subjects, but there is a little bit of hunting at either end. Again, I filmed this with a Beta M50. Canon's touchscreen interface is one of the best around and now supports touch and drag options that let you move the autofocus point by touch while composing through the viewfinder. It works really well and you can also limit how much the screen is active to avoid your nose activating it by mistake. The M50 complements its Wi-Fi with NFC and Bluetooth, the latter keeping a low power connection with your phone for seamless connections, quick remote control and location tagging. Canon's wireless is one of the best around. So that's my first looks review of the EOS M50. The severe crop and loss of confident focusing may render the 4K movie mode of limited use. And I'm also disappointed there's no panorama mode or USB charging. But don't forget the fact you're getting an APS-C sensor with dual pixel CMOS AF, at least for 1080 video, a side hinged touchscreen that can face the subject, built-in viewfinder and a microphone input, as well as great wireless connectivity. It really makes the EOS M50 a bit of a feature pack bargain for the money. And for me, arguably the most compelling model in Canon's mirrorless lineup to date. Look out for my in-depth reviews at cameralabs.com. And again, if you'd like to find out about the latest camera news with hands-on previews direct from official events, you know where to subscribe. I'd also love to hear if the M50 is finally the Canon mirrorless you've been waiting for. Let me know in the comments, and if you found my video useful, please don't forget to like and share. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.